Failed Athletes Perspective is brought to you by Amazon. Go to 86charles.com and click on the Amazon link before you waste countless dollars on sporting goods and team gear for a sport you were never good at and for a team that doesn't care about you. Cheers. It's time for the Failed Athlete Perspective. It's time for the Failed Athlete's Perspective. Travis Spencer. How are you, sir? John Derby, I'm doing great. It's a little it's a little slow time in the sports world, I gotta admit, but we do have some basketball season is ramping up. Teams are I, making I moves. I feel like there's 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 big deals. Yeah. Big deals. All right, so the trade deadline is over. A little bit of a dud, but we had some huge ones early with Boogie and Serge Ibaka. What, uh, who do you think did the best job moving forward to prepare themselves for the playoff run? Well, I have to, I've, I've got to stop right at the beginning and say it wasn't a dud. The fact that we got that Boogie Cousins deal. The actual. You never, you, you yeah. rarely get big deals like I'm that. I'm saying the actual mid-season. deadline. That was a couple of days before, but the actual deadline, you know, is like we were expecting maybe one more. Yeah, but, but I can't, I, I pretty much count. It, once we get to the All Star game, that's pretty much trade deadline as far as I'm concerned. Right. So whatever happens in those couple of days, like that's all leading up to, and that is a huge. Typically, the last day, there's not a lot of action. We already talked about it, but it's it was a huge deal. You know, it's a big deal. Now we'll see. Now yeah. we'll see what the, they've looked like shit so far, but we'll see. Right. Well, like like I told you, it wasn't going to make them a great team. But anyways, the uh, so what else happened? Uh, we got let's start in Toronto. Let's start in Toronto. They made some deals. They earlier added Serge Ibaka, which was a nice pick. Yeah, I like that. And then uh, they went and added P.J. Tucker from our Phoenix Suns. Good old P.J. Honestly, I got to say, I, I like P.J., but he was never the answer. He was never going to move the needle in Phoenix. He, yeah. Like He's a great guy off the bench, play some defense, maybe sink some threes for you. He's a tough guy. He brings a good veteran presence. That may be what Toronto needs. And they lost a wing guy in losing Terrence Ross. So, you know, you add P.J. Tucker and Serge Ibaka, overall, they're going to be much better. But then... They lost Kyle Lowry. How long is Kyle Lowry out? That's the problem. Lowry's out four to six weeks, so he'll be back by the playoffs. So it's not the end of the world. And in a, and in a way, it helps them a little bit because Lowry was playing like the most minutes behind LeBron James. So it at least forces some rest, and hopefully it doesn't cause too much rust. So he might actually be fairly fresh going into the playoffs. Right. So it might not be all negative. And well, and and I think I th- I honestly think. Toronto brought in PJ Tucker exclusively to try and guard LeBron James in a ca- in a Cleveland series. Yeah, absolutely, a big body like that. I mean, but that's isn't that why they yeah. brought in what's his name last year, Damari Carroll? That was the same. That was the uh, same I narrative mean, yeah. there. You know, that so was, I guess it was definitely. I mean, it's you do want multiple guys because absolutely, yeah. dude. As many bodies as you can, if as, as many guys as you have on your team that you think as best as possible can guard LeBron one on one. I mean, rack up those dudes. So Toronto, as of now, is only a half game up on the Wizards, which you could easily see the Raptors falling into fourth. The Wizards are playing Oh, they're well. going to lose that spot for sure. So They'll lose that spot. I mean. Because who, who did the Wizards add? Uh, Bojan Bogdanovic? Bogdanovic! I don't know how you say it. Yeah, guy from the uh, good scorer from yeah, the Yeah, he, he he gets hot. He's a gr- he's a great shooter. He can I don't know sure. I don't know what else he can he's probably a decent passer uh and a good shooter, but defensively I don't think he's helping you out, but Yeah, but they what I mean they were just look, they were looking for some depth and offense off the bench and I mean he definitely provides that. That guy's a starting scorer. Yeah. So if you can have him coming off your bench, I think that's a good move. Yeah, get some points while Wall and Beal are resting, and your boy Markeef, because inevitably Keef is going to have a good game, and then he's going to have an awful game, and then he's going to have an okay game, and then he's going to have an awful game. So you just want some consistency well, there. I mean, that guy's always a moment away from a meltdown. So I I do like what the uh, OKC Thunder did, getting rid of uh, – Yeah, it's a good move. It was They got Taj Gibson and Doug McBuckets from the Bulls. Yeah, they brought in old McBuckets. Who'd they give up? Oh, Cameron Payne, Anthony Morrow. Uh, Kev, Kev, uh, Cameron Payne, Joffrey Levine, and, or Laverne. And Morrow. There you go. Yeah, uh, Anthony Morrow. I've always liked Taj Gibson. I think he's a good player. He, and I think was there there might have been a draft pick in there as well. Most likely. I'm sure the Bulls got know. a draft pick out of it. it only makes sense. I thought, yeah. 
but a little more shooting. Oh, actually, I th- no, actually, I feel like OKC might have got a second round coming back. All right. Well, if you don't know, then stop talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just talk about the players that we do know. That could spread the floor, give a little toughness in the paint. You match uh, Steven Adams with Taj Gibson. That's a decent front court. Yeah, no, I, I, I actually think the uh, the Taj Gibson edition is kind of the the crux of that deal because I just I don't know what you're going to get out of McBuckets. I don't know if you're going to get what you want. Well, they've they've always needed a shooter to stretch the floor. You know, it's like and nobody's right. ever really. They brought in Singler. They had Morrow. Nobody ever really did it like they needed. So maybe McBuckets will be that guy because you're going to get open shots yeah, with Westbrook like- just tearing up the lane. I I always expected McDermott to be at least a poor man's Kyle Korver. He's he, I don't even think he's like a welfare Kyle Korver. I would say more he's he'd be more in the Ryan Anderson vein because he's a little bit bigger, but he's not that good yet. He's not there. I was gonna say I don't think he I don't really think he's even that much bigger. And defensively, he is significantly worse than Korver. You have to remember it's only what is Korver can at least make a guy right, work. but it's only his second like, or third Doug year. McDermott? It's only his second or third year in the league. So he's still young. Maybe this is a be new he's opportunity. He's been in the league long enough that you should at least see signs. Shooting, shooting from the score from the score that we saw in college. The score that he was in college, he's not even close to that in the league. And if and then you factor in the fact that he cannot guard anybody. He gets ISOed every single time he's on the right, floor. Right, it's a liability. Doesn't matter who he's on. Well, having Taj Gibson there to, and Stephen Adams to help protect the rim will help a little bit. Although it didn't help him in Chicago, right? The Taj Gibson thing, at least, right? Uh, but I, I, I but like no, that I mean, move. I, I mean, dude, any any help any help for Westbrook though, I don't think is bad. Let's see where is and with uh, Cantor out, Gibson's a nice pickup. Yeah, I was just thinking that Cantor will probably be back for the end of the season, right? Yeah, he'll be back for the playoffs right now. Okay, so he's still in seventh place. Oh, they pretty much got seventh locked down. They're eight games up on. Yeah, they're the not. Place. I don't think they'll slide into that eight. So that could be a uh, interesting if they can slip to six. Houston, Oklahoma City would be a good first round series. Spurs, Oklahoma City would be interesting at least. All right, what else we got? Uh, ooh, I, how about uh, what the Cavs did? Yeah, I was going to say, let's go back to uh, the East. Deron Williams. Uh, Darren Williams is a good pickup. Yeah, the, the, the he, Mavs. In theory, serves exactly the purpose they need. So we'll start with, well, the Mavs traded for Nerlens Noel. They get their center that they've wanted. It's a, kind of puzzling for Philadelphia to do that, isn't it? Like, shouldn't you give up? I thought they should have given up Okafor because Okafor would fit, or Embiid fits better with Noel, it seems like, right? Because you want more of the defensive presence and an offensive guy. Right. Uh, but but right. whatever. I mean, Philadelphia is a mess. We don't even need to talk about them. I think they're going to get rid of Okafor, too, probably just during the off season. But LeBron James was crying and crying and crying and crying about getting a playmaker <laughs> for off the bench, and he got his playmaker off the bench. And now he can shut up. Yeah. And then they might add, it looks like they're going to add Andrew Bogut to that too, which is... That's huge. That's big. That's just a luxury, to be honest with you. It's 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 not even a necessity, but what a what a nice piece to have coming off the bench. Right. We'll see how it fits in. Like, is, Did you watch the Cavs game last night? I didn't watch it. I did watch it last night. Is Corver starting to fit in? Because the games I watched early... He yeah, was, for sure. He's, he's the same defensive liability, though. He gets ISO'd. Like, I don't... He's not, but he's not near. Like he can at least stay in front of somebody, and you can you can hide him defensively. Right. You can compensate for him defensively with a guy like McDermott. There's no, you cannot even hide him. He is gonna get picked apart every single but time. But his nickname's McBuckets. He just, I, I just, I, I hope, get, dude. I get, I, I like I the pray guy. Pray for him. I really do. But I think he's been dis- he's been disappointing, and I, I sort of feel like maybe we've seen who he is. Maybe he just hasn't gotten a chance. But I think that we've seen who he is. So do these moves, which is just a taller Jimmer for dead. Do do the moves by the moves by the Cavs and Toronto, like uh, is Toronto a real contender in the East? That's my question for you. Are they a real contender with these moves? All healthy. Mm, Kyle Lowry's no. back. You still Ibaka doesn't put him no. over the Cavs. Does it put him over Boston? No. no. Does it puts uh, maybe they're close to even with Boston, but I still I don't think they puts them over Boston. No. I don't. So, quick. Because, honestly, I don't even know if it puts them over the Wizards. Right. I might, at this point, I might like the Wizards more than the Raptors. That's hard to, that's hard to say. With the Kyle Lowry. I think, for me, it's, it's Cleveland, Boston, and then Toronto and Washington are pretty much dead even to me. But I, would on, I might honestly lean towards Washington because 
I think John Wall is the best player on both of those teams. How about Boston not doing anything? Does that surprise you? <sighs> no, because they haven't done anything in the last couple of years. They have so many assets. I mean, they're going to have a great pick in the draft this year. So would you? But they're a team that feels like it's built to win right now. So you want to throw in? I mean. Obviously, if you're going to get a top three pick, that guy is going to be pretty ready for the league, right? So you can throw him in next year. Is he a starter? You know, it's like, but is that does that put you with over the they, top? Here's with, with what they have to give up, Boston needs to get a superstar back or hold on to what they have. Because unless you get basically Paul George or Jimmy Butler, if you don't get one of those guys or somebody of that exact same quality and caliber, it doesn't make you better than Cleveland. So why throw away, you know, assets or picks or potent or guys that are potentially superstars for for lesser deals? Like I don't I don't I don't throw away a package of assets for Danilo Gallinari because that doesn't that doesn't beat Cleveland. Right. It doesn't. The only chance you have if you're Boston to beat Cleveland is maybe if you add Paul George or Jimmy Butler. And even then, I still don't think so. Right. Because then you still need Cleveland. You still need Kevin Love to get hurt or Kyrie Irving to get hurt. Somebody. What about Melo? Does Melo to Boston move the needle? Nope. I mean, it moves. The, yeah, it makes it. It definitely makes him better. But it's again, Melo doesn't beat LeBron. Yeah, and, and it kind of clogs up what they have working so well. I mean, obviously Brad Stevens is a Absolutely. pretty good coach, and maybe they could figure it out. But yeah, I don't. I don't like Melo there. I, I really I like Paul Mello, George I think or Jimmy only Butler. Makes the difference on. Uh, like, if you, you put Melo on, I mean, I don't think it really works system-wise, but, like, Houston or San Antonio, okay, he's a difference maker on a team like that. Maybe not even those, you know, specifically, just because I don't think system-wise he works. But he helps a team. Like, okay, Clippers. You put him on the Clippers, that's a difference maker. Right. But outside of that, no. Carmelo's not helping anybody win a championship. I feel like you could say that with the Clippers as is, but they would have to give up so much for him, in a trade at least. Like if they brought him in as a free agent or you added him to what they had, that could be right. That's impressive. Yeah, but you, know? it, you would, I mean, if you gave away – But if you give away Blake for Melo, then you're right back at square where, wherever. Yeah, no, you know? You're not, not, you're not nope, moving nope. beyond. Hell no. No, you're making yourself worse. So we got a surprising move. The, uh, the Knicks just cut. Brandon Jennings, what's up with that? Why are they cutting? Bra Waved him. Doesn't make any sense. They kept Rose. Doesn't make any sense to keep him either. I mean, I don't know what the contract. I mean, if that if that saves you money, it doesn't. Who cares? They're not going anywhere. They're not doing anything. Yeah, the Knicks are pathetic. What a joke. W were you excited when? Yeah, there's not. There's. Or, were you excited when Phil Jackson went to New York? Because I thought that maybe he'd turn it around. And I like it. I like it when the Lakers and Knicks are good. It makes the league better. Because I don't. Exci I was gonna say excited's not the word. I was definitely interested, and I thought it was a good move. Right. It's, but it also would have made more sense if he had done something with the Lakers instead. What do you think about Magic with the Lakers? That's so the Lakers fired. I think it's worth a shot. Mitch Kupchak. I don't. I mean, it, they promoted. Magic doesn't fail it much. So Magic's president of basketball operations, right? And so yeah. he's running the whole show and he's bringing in who, what's the guy's name a former agent i think that's gonna now be uh the gm yeah i, I don't remember his name so his yeah. first move was trading was kobe's former trading agent. lou williams right to the rockets got a first round pick out of it it's a good start yeah that's fine but i don't nothing wrong with we'll that. see the lakers i don't they don't have many pieces they're gonna need some free agents because i don't see building through the draft it's not working I, what do you mean it's not working i don't think that they've done poorly I don't. D'Angelo Russell's not. I don't think is the answer. That's what I'm saying. But so you he's need not a new point terrible. Guard. So you need a new point guard. But yeah. But again. But he is. But he's also a guy that people would be interested in if you needed to move him. It's not like you you would get nothing back for that guy. Julius Randle's pretty good, and he's still developing. So I'm not ready to say that he's not the guy. They started off this year like it might. They might be able to do something, and then uh, what happened? I don't. Did somebody get injured? I don't know. They just fell apart, kind of. Right? No. They just they they were playing over their heads. And then they kind of came back to reality. This is the team that they are, but there's still there's a lot of hope and potential there. And I know that sometimes those turn into nothing. Right. Well, and the big thing for them right. this year, the most important thing for the Lakers is to finish in the bottom three, because otherwise, if they're four, they lose that pick. Right. So that's huge. But they've already got you. You got to look at them like they've got the coach in place. That that's a lock. They've got the right guy in place at coach. They haven't screwed up their last three draft picks. Randall's a good player. Russell's a good player. Ingram 
is a good right. player. Tons of potential. Could I don't know be, if they've hit on really any good. of them in terms of like we found a superstar, but that's a lot of guys to work with. Those are pieces you can move if you need to. Uh, Larry Nance Jr. is a nice surprise. Yeah, like that's a great second round second round pick. He's been really good. Uh, Jordan Spurts. Clarkson is is worth all the is worth the money they paid him, and he's worth holding on to. So they've you know what, and that's a guy they got like in the second round. You like, know what really grinds my gears though, John. I'm pretty sure this What's this that? Lakers pick is would have been the Suns pick, right? That's the one they traded to Philly for Brandon Knight. Probably, yeah. Ugh. I, uh, that sounds about Awful. right. Awful. Brandon Knight. What a joke. Yeah, dude, and, yeah. Ugh. Suns have made terrible decisions. Ugh. All right, what else we got to talk about? Ooh, ooh, another huge one. My man, the Spaniard, Jose Calderon, coming to the Golden State Warriors. We are now f- – the, the war. I say we like I'm a Warriors fan. The Warriors are now are a Warriors officially fan. a super team because they have Jose Calderon, Spanish <laughs> legend. Well, and I mean, they need depth, and I think it, in anyone that they can add, anybody – is probably good. I wish they would have gotten. And call the rounds nice off. The go bench. get Bogut. Don't uh, is Bogut just saying f you to the Warriors by going to the the Cavs? He he's pissed at him. I hope so. I hope so. I hope he's doing it because it's personal. I hope he feels like they cut him loose. That would add another nice element to a rematch, right? One yes. more, one I more storyline of I hatred. I want more hatred in this NBA. Oh yeah. Um, I'm still. I uh, the needle didn't move either way. The Cavs are still clearly the best. And the Warriors are still clearly the best in the West. Well, no, dude, there was there was nothing that unless LeBron or Steph Curry got traded, there wasn't going to be something that shook up. Well, I think legitimately the top of the East and the top. If of the Jimmy West. Butler or Paul George got traded, you could have made the argument that somebody was making that leap, but didn't happen. We can't make that argument. Not against a healthy again. Not against a healthy Cleveland team. Against a healthy Cleveland team, there's nothing. There's not a move to be made. All right, John. Do we have anything else to talk about in the NBA before we move on to soccer? Oh, no. I'll find something if that's where we're moving on to. Just joking. I don't know. Let's let's talk about Jamal Charles getting waived. Let's move on to the NFL (laughs) offseason. Oh, Antonio Brown signed a big contract, highest paid NFL receiver now, which of course he deserved. Pittsburgh would have been crazy to not do that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I mean, I don't love the money, but you can't let that guy go. You don't have another answer, NFL, and he's a huge part of that offense. NFL contracts are never crippling, though, you know, because there's always so many right. outs. No, and, I know it's 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 what the market is. Yeah. And again, you don't. It's not like it's not like you have another guy. And it looks like they get a franchise tag, Le'Veon Bell. Uh, the Cardinals. Speaking of franchise tags, franchise tag Chandler Jones. So he'll be around for another year. I like. He had a good year. Yeah, it's a good move. They're move. just any hope for the Cardinals next year. Because then it's because then it's yeah you're going to pay him a lot this year, but if he doesn't pan out, you're not you're not anchored to him long term. You just pay him a pay him a big chunk one year, and then maybe work out a long term, or you let him right. go. Yeah, because really they're old enough that they need to go all in again this year and hope for the best. But I think I think they're trying to keep the window open one more year with Carson Palmer and see if they can. See if they can have the year this year that they were supposed to have last year. Maybe they'll bring in a witch doctor and they'll resurrect his corpse. Although he finished the year better than he started, but ugh, what a what a horrible season. You're being a little you're being a little harsh on Carson Palmer, man. I, uh, he he can't there, hold there, out of the ball. Get, dude, there's so many How many turnovers? I get what you're saying. I understand all that's wrong with Carson Palmer. Don't get me wrong. But we could we could have it so much worse. We've had it so much worse at times. We talk about Ryan Lindley is a gentleman and a scholar, and I don't care how he plays football. Oh, okay. okay then. <laughs> oh, well, then why is he out cool. there? <laughs> Ryan Lindley. Yeah, all right, never mind. Sorry. Starting quarterback. Let's, let's suit up Ryan Lindley. That's like the worst. Who's not a Cardinal anymore. The worst all-time playoff starting quarterback is probably Ryan Lindley, right? He's up there. I mean, TJ Yates won a game. Got to give him that. Um, yeah, it's brutal. You know who I'm bummed out about was – now I can't remember his stupid name. Who was the quarterback that finished the season for the Bears, the former USC quarterback? Oh, the guy that was on the Cardinals until they cut him, right? Yes. Oh, what is yes. his name? Yeah, that dude. He looked okay with the Bears. I cannot believe I can't remember his name. He looked good, actually. I mean, in terms of a backup, I thought he looked really good. And why can't I remember his stupid name? Yeah, he was a big deal at USC, didn't he? Barkley. Matt Barkley. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't he, like, the one that was signed at, like, 13 or had, like, a verbal commitment or something to USC at, like, really young? 
Something like that, yeah. They all no. They think they offered him a scholarship at like thirteen right. when Lane Kiffin was there, right? And he was supposed to be like the number one pick overall, and that never panned out. And he was never, he was never terrible in the league, but he was never good. No, I mean, he'll definitely get paid for that little stint but, that he did with the Bears. At the but end that of was the, year. the best opportunity he got, and he, I mean, he delivered at least as a backup. Yeah, it's just disappointing when you just give up on a guy like that before you give him a chance because he has the pedigree. And that's the thing. Well, that's the thing. We need that's the, the Cardinals need a backup. What Drew Stanton? Is, I don't know why. I don't know why Bruce Arians is so in love with Drew Stanton I, as his number two and won't ever have anyone. I want Drew play. Stanton on the sideline because of the dancing, but the stand dance yeah. is great. But make him your number three. Right. Let him hold the clipboard for the guy who holds the clipboard. That's that's important. Sure. Let him hold the jock for the guy who holds the clipboard. Oh, I got no. I have no problem with that guy being the third quarterback. Breaking news, John. The Vikings declined 2017 option for running back Adrian Peterson. Holy cow. Adrian Peterson is going to be a free agent. Does this change everything in the league? Uh, Not necessarily because it could just mean that they're renegotiating a contract. It doesn't necessarily mean he's not coming back to the Vikings. Correct. And he's been injured enough. They may end up being like, all right, we're going to pay you less per year, but we're going to give you a couple of more years. I'm just glad that the Cardinals have a great running back because this would be this is like Emmett Smith all over again. Somebody's going to overpay this guy, and he's not going to do much. I th- Man, it, Emmett gets a bad rap. He didn't do terrible in Arizona. Like I get it that that at the time that that was where players went to die. Yeah, but I just think that there's. But he had a, like if 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 not a thousand yard season, it was like a nine hundred yard season. Right. Still, but don't you think that there's fundamentally there's just fundamentally something wrong with the idea that you're going to bring in a veteran running back to be your lead like running back is a position i think you get you draft you draft running backs and you sign Dude, we, offensive line we brought in boomer esiason back in the day like whatever yeah, but quarterbacks so, are different <laughs> quarterbacks i'm saying running backs running backs i don't think you pay big money for you unless you grew them in your it system and then you give them their money, first contract dude. like david johnson should obviously get paid you know when when his contract's up because you got to keep that guy because he's still young but as far as bringing in a 30 31 year old running back we've just seen it over and over again and it's never really gotten somebody to the top unless you're the patriots of course who bring in but they get them for bargain basement right that's how the patriots do it it's not like they're signing the top guy i mean yes in general you're correct but again when you're talking about a guy like adrian peterson he's not a normal running back so it's I'm I'm hesitant to just write him off as an oh he's an over thirty running back give him the league minimum like that's not that's not entirely the case and depending on what team you're on if if you've got the extra money to spend and you feel like hey that name puts a couple extra butts in the seats that guy provides a little bit of leadership and some tutelage to some younger players it, then it's probably worth your price even if it's you know overpaying him quote unquote is there anywhere you see him going anybody you think will make a play for him. Oh, a ton, I mean, dude, I could rattle off a lot. I mean, probably half the league is probably eligible for a guy like that. Right. Because, dude, if you got to figure. Virtually every team in this league is a two-back system. Yeah, of course. So, like, the, the, the teams that you would say he's not good, he's not going to Pittsburgh. Right. He's not going to Arizona. Um, He's not going to Arizona. That would be one for sure. New England could be interesting, but I don't think so. Probably not. Probably not either of the L.A. teams because they're both – Pretty well locked in at running back, uh, both and both awful, just awful. No, Chargers Melvin are Gordon way better. Had a great I'm not year. saying the running backs. I'm saying the teams. Sure, oh, the Rams. What a joke. Ugh, ugh. Makes me want to throw up Dude, in my mouth. Come on. What a How joke. How about it's ooh? You know where I like bad for years. Seattle. What about Adrian Peter- Peterson to the Seahawks? That's interesting. Or the or the Broncos. Yeah. I feel like the Seahawks do such a good job of finding no name running backs. Oh, that's funny, and they're him. usually and again, successful. You talk about an offense that he, they don't need leadership from Adrian Peterson. They've got that all over the place. Let's not have him in our division. How about that, genius? Uh, it's our division. I'm giving up on all. I'm, I don't. Ha- I'm just going full sports atheist. I don't even care about teams anymore. I already burned my Cardinals hat a couple okay. years ago. I don't. You know, I don't want any association with these f- franchises and organizations. I'm sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure these teams are oh. heartbroken. No, I'm out. No, Travis, come back. <laughs> I'm out. We'll do whatever you want to appease you. I am only cheering for the meatballs and teams that I've played on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John. Liverpool lost three one to Leicester City. They're falling apart. What what can they do to turn it around? Uh, kick the ball harder. 
Okay, that's soccer analysis from Run John Derby. Faster. Thank you so much for that amazing soccer analysis. I'll, we'll go to you next <laughs> week for more. <laughs> All right, as always, <laughs> it's time to 86 something, and you cannot 86 the beautiful game. I will not allow it. No, I won't allow I won't do that either. Um, what I am going to 86 is Travis's Sports Allegiance. Adios, stupid team. Travis is now full blown sports atheist. He believes in no one. He worships nothing. Uh, and it sounds beautiful when you put it like that. Thank you. Thank you.